G here from the Hall Grill and Media Team. We're here at the All Roads uh, Asphalt Plant here at 2320 Rogers in Port Coquitlam. We're going to meet the guys that put it all together and made it happen. Let's get it. So asphalt, uh, boys, comes from three main ingredients. We got, we got virgin aggregates, recycled products, and oil. You heat everything up, you dry, take the moisture out of it, and add the oil, and away we go, we make some mix. So on this side, we start with some virgin aggregates. We, here we have six feeders. This is for all the materials that we have, different yep. things. You got to think it's like baking a cake. All the different materials go into a pot, you stir it up, and out comes the mix. On this, all the feeders are controlled uh, volumetrically. They're all on BFDs, variable frequency drives. Okay. So I can do different speeds, different everything for the different amounts of each product in each mix. So as it comes through, it goes through the system, we heat it up. When we're mixing some temperatures, uh, the virgin aggregates, so you're pushing, I don't know, pretty close to uh, 200 degrees Celsius. Cause when you enter in, uh, into sands and materials like that. Okay, um, so yeah, we superheat the aggregate as it's coming through. Um, so we're not degradating the material though. Right. We don't want to break it down as it's going through the drum. We want to dry it off, get the moisture out so then we can get that heat transfer over into the wrap to get the moisture out of that. So during that whole process of heating and stuff like that, yep. uh, we got a, a bag house it's called, but yep. it's almost like a big vacuum cleaner. Okay. So when you, uh, when you dry out virgin aggregate or aggregate, you got that moisture. Right. When moisture dries, it's like a pot of water, so you get that steam value, right? So it, it exponentially bursts, right? So we're drawing that through, but when you're drawing that through, you're getting dust part particulate, right? right? So that comes in the vacuum cleaner. Basically, right. basically. It removes the dust from the drying process yes, of the aggregate. Yes, exactly. So during that process, uh, there's 684 bags I do believe in there. So we got a reverse airflow, but it just relieves the bags. Some have pulse jets, we got a reverse airflow. So the all the it releases the dust particles back down. In the bottom of the bag house we have uh, an auger which transfers it over and we blow it up into our mineral silo. So what, what happens here is when we we blow all our real, real fine, it's almost like a flower material up into the dust silo. This gives us great uh, um, efficiency and quality on the amount of bottom end that we can put back into the mix. Right. So if we get a dirty product from our supplier, then we can limit on how much we put back Perfect. into the mix. Is that like kind of like below sort of 75 micron type stuff? Yeah, like really it's fine, fine real fine stuff. stuff. Yeah. So, so that goes back in there, we monitor that. Um, what we have here also, this is, a, we talked earlier about it, but the flue gas system, yes. this, this pipe that runs back here, it comes uh, when the vacuum cleaner, the bag house is drawing all that air through, right. um, we actually draw a bit of that material or the airflow back through our burner and re-burn re it to get the, um, the NOx, gotcha. our NOx lower and, and all that stuff. Gotcha. So that's, that. No other plant in Vancouver or anywhere that I've worked on, and I've worked on a lot of plants, have this system. Another major improvement here is uh, um, being in Metro Vancouver, yep. um, the particulate. We're only allowed so much particulate entering in the atmosphere and stuff, right? right? And so, so how do you guys monitor that and control that? Well, that's, we do once a year analyzation, right? Yep. But here, we actually got a dust particulate monitor. Okay. So if we, like, if you lose a bag or you get a tear or anything in it, um, it'll actually send us a signal up in the tower to say, hey, something's not right here, you got a bad bag or, or, gotcha. or whatever, right? That, that is a new, uh, new improvement on the site too. Okay, so just kind of walk us through how it mechanically functions. You've got your bins of different materials. Yep. You're taking out your volumetric chunks of that material yep. and it hits the conveyor and where do we go from there? It comes, uh, it comes through, we actually pre-screen it before it hits the drum okay. because uh, sometimes the supplier gives us oversized material and stuff like that so it, scal it scalps all the bad stuff off basically. Gotcha. Right? So it, it is a, it's a glorified sieve yeah. and, it, and it acts as uh, 
when you get the material coming out of the feeders, um, it's all different materials and they're all uniform, but that actually starts as a mixing. Gotcha. It hits the screen and it'll actually right. start blending the material. Um, all scales, uh, uh, this is a classified as the virgin scale. Yep. So this one's the heart of the operation because off this scale, it monitor or it will inject the right amount of oil. It will change the amount of wrap the recycled products to yep. go into the system and the oil is the most expensive product of the, the gotcha. so if this if this scales out and you could be putting in too much oil yep. well you're just basically blowing oil and then you're not getting the proper mix design right. so into the drum it goes right yep. um, so all your materials they've been sieved out measured calibrated goes through this thing here it's weighed it's weighed and scaled yep and it heads into this hopper over here it heads into the hopper into the drum big drum and that seems to me like where a lot of the magic happens. Right uh, it is, it's a, it's a glorified mix master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so down, it goes down the center of the drum. Um, the flame is probably in about 20 feet because okay. it's a long nose burner and it creates a veil in there. It's basically just dropping the, it's an eight foot drum and it just drops the aggregate down through the, through the, through the heat source as okay. it's coming, drawn through and dries itself and hopefully we get 100% of the moisture out of it. Perfect. Sometimes sometimes in the winter times when you're running high, yep. it's tough. Gotcha. It's tough. So but that's something you guys try to adjust for. Sure. Yeah, yeah. With our with our rates and stuff. This this drum we've had uh, uh, it's a 300 um, uh, imperial tons per hour, so 270 metric tons per hour. Okay. And uh, we've had it we've had it up to the 260, nice. 260 ton metric nice. tons, so it can put some mix out, yeah. So, so what's happened is over the years there, I started out as a young kid, uh, yeah. 14, 15 years old growing yeah. up and, and my dad's company and, and crushing and, and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, it was a lot of push buttons way back when, right. and and now they've, with the age of computers and and the power that they have, they've made a thing with a programmable logical computer. So the PLCs are mainly uh, doing everything computer based. We have no push right. buttons anymore. So when you say push button, would it be that you would be working on an item, you push the button, you feed or do whatever activity that was required to take from that item? And push the button close exactly on to the next one where now the computer likely just orchestrates all that it, it does it a hundred percent for you the only thing you really have the push buttons for now is emergency stops gotcha. if you have a panic you hit the button and yeah. and she'll shut her down yeah. right but and now most operations are all all plc controlled like gotcha. off the computers and 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 such and do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing what are the it's, you know what? Anyway? The pluses is the new kids coming into the industry. Yeah. Right? To entice the new kids to come into the industry. Yeah. They, they know computers. Right. Whereas older, older operators and stuff like that, they, yeah. they feel more comfortable with the push buttons because that's what they grew up on. Gotcha. But the new kids in the era of what we're evolving to, um, it's, it's definitely the PLCs. Makes sense. It, it does make 100%. And you're saying a little bit about how when systems go down, um, in the plant that is largely, uh, you know, computer-based or, you know, the technology is computer-based or web-based or whatever yep. it is. Um, how do you guys deal with issues with when dealing with a supplier like GenCore that is from the state? Well, GenCore, uh, their service is, is great and, and they're, uh, they're, they're only a phone call away. Yeah. So they have a 24-7 helpline. Yeah. They'll have guys on call, so you'll get the call if it's after hours. It's a little disadvantage because they're out on the East Coast and they're three hours ahead, but, gotcha. but they do have service techs who are available 24-7. how do they make adjustments to our troubleshoot problems you're having? They, they come in through the system, the computer system. Yep. They have it, uh, uh, every plant is on a network. It has, a, has the ability to be on a network. Yeah. We'll put it that way. Yeah. We, we don't want it open to the internet. So there's all the firewalls and all that right. stuff, right? Because they don't want automatic updates and yeah. uh, stuff like that to corrupt it. And, sure. and, 
Um, but then they basically can access your system remotely from wherever they are. Right. And then they complete a diagnosis on whatever your problem is, and then they adjust it and correct it for uh, it? To some degree. If it's out in the field, we go out and correct it ourselves. Yep. Uh, most of all the programming is done at the startup stage. Yep. Um, so then mostly it's just going in there saying, hey, Dennis, the, uh, the limit switches aren't working here. you got to yep. go up and check them out. Yep. Or it's diagnosing stuff like that, right? So, well, we're kind of on the topic of technology, uh, Dennis. Um, in terms of all this new grant talk on technology, you know, the guys are having great success out in the field uh, using the smooth ride system. I think they just had a couple other items set up uh, on the paver. Um, what are your thoughts on, on, on all this stuff with the Topcon GPS and how do you find it's, it's, it's working for you guys? I can, I can just say the whole Topcon situation, it has, uh, it's taken control out of the operator's hands to some degree, like the, his ground men and his back end men. Sure. To uh, uh, it's been a it's been a growing for them. They had to trust it. Yeah. They had to g get trust because they're somewhat old school too. That's right. But it has actually sped up production. I feel. Perfect. So. So here, so I think what I'm hearing you saying is, you know, there is a. Um, kind of a trusting phase there where you know like a learning curve where you don't know if you can trust it or not you hope it all works yeah and then but it sounds like once they've got out there and started really implementing it that they found that they're it's working for them and you're increasing production. oh 100 110 percent like i've never seen uh, uh for the short window out on that highway yeah. to be able to lay that quantity of mix uh I don't think we could be doing it manually. I think Topcon's taken a big lead in that role. In terms of how you would have laid the black down on this Highway 1 job traditionally, yeah. how, many, how much have you improved in terms of production? I think we've gained a third. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, we're getting That's a third more. That is. That's an amazing improvement. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And we have a lot of fun here. Yeah. We caught a, you know what? I don't, uh, it's a team atmosphere here. Yeah. Like it was, it's been team first. Yeah. Um, there's, it, that's high energy driven. Yeah. Um, at my uh, other locations, there was no team. There were, they preach team, yeah. but, but team wasn't there. They, exactly. You're totally right. You know, this is a big thing in our industry. Right? Yeah. That is, and you know, you've been around long enough, you know it. Oh yeah. And you can see when guys, they, they preach a lot of stuff, they preach safety, they preach quality, they preach team environment, and they preach uh, you know, family values, yeah. but none of them really live it. No. So it's really nice that, you know, you know when I talk to guys like you, that I know yeah. that it's actually happening. Yeah. And, and you can tell in the work, you can tell with the guys you work with, you can tell with the attitudes of everybody that, you know, it's legit, right? It is, it is. it's 100% legit, because, yeah. uh, uh, even Rod coming out to the site, no other manager, presidents. presidents, would come out there. And if you got an issue, he's more than willing to help you. That's right. Right? He's not going to, he's willing to get dirty. Yeah. And, and uh, the others aren't. My name is Rod Stevens. I'm the president of All Roads. So welcome to All Roads. Here we are. We're in the control tower of our uh, new 2020 GenCore asphalt plant. And uh, you can see some of the controls around us. But when we picked this plant, and we built this plant, which was a two-year process. Our focus was to be able to utilize the best control technologies available. And we really meant it. And we put our money behind it because one of the things where this plant is located is it's in an environmentally sensitive area, which all places are nowadays, but being in the metro Vancouver area, even more so, especially when it comes to trying to meet air pollution control bylaw standards. So they're getting more strict and the criteria is really tough. But it's fair if you're going to be morally and corporately responsible. And we really wanted to do that at All Roads. So we picked the plant, one of the cleanest plants that you'll find in North America to date as, we, as I stand here before you. Uh, the air emissions that go up into the sky are absolute minimum levels for an asphalt plant. And uh, we have spent a lot of money on various controls to be able to make sure that that um, that we can maintain um, that cleanliness of a plant. From an environmental perspective, uh, we are very proud of the fact that uh, at the top of our silos and all the way down our main slat, it's all enclosed. 
and we have a blue smoke capture system that gets recirculated back into our burner so that allows less emissions up into the air as you go through the plant you'll see we have a state-of-the-art bag house which is collecting all of the dust particles and so forth from all of the various moving parts of the plant it's taking it and it's recycling it back into the uh, asphalt itself on top of that we have a um, a flue gas return system which means just prior to anything going up out the stack and into the air and when you see what looks like smoke it's really just steam because just before it goes up the stack and into the sky the flue gas return system brings it right back to the burner where again it gets ignited and reburnt as we uh, continue with the asphalt production process so this is the cleanest plant in the city of Vancouver as it stands right now the cleanest plant probably in Canada and we challenge all competitors to support a plant and show us a plant that on all levels actually meets the standards that this plant does um, and is environmentally clean uh, as this one.